Hi there, it's Tracy Kierden from StepbyStepPainting.net and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint this whimsical Santa Claus on a 10 inch by 20 inch canvas with acrylics. So this is one of those long size canvases. It's a 10 by 20 and so it's got the very vertical form to it and it's going to allow us to get this Santa to have this really fun tall hat. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. I do have a traceable for this painting. Um, it's one that you would print out on three sheets of paper, but I'm also gonna demonstrate how to draw the Santa Claus. So I'm gonna start at the bottom of the canvas and kind of take my hand and measure about uh, four fingers from the bottom. So if you have a ruler, you can measure about five inches, four or five inches from the bottom. And I'm gonna make a little mark. So that mark is going to be where the top of his, um, actually the bottom of his mustache will be. So the mustache is gonna be drawn kind of above that little mark. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw his mustache. So just draw a nice kind of curly uh, mustache that kind of um, almost as wide as the canvas. And I'm gonna apologize ahead of time here, but um, the camera is not picking up my pencil lines very well in this video and I'm also sketching very lightly so I'm gonna kind of do the best I can to explain it but then you're gonna go ahead and draw his nose so kind of like an oval nose above the mustache and then draw kind of another sort of half circle shape um, to define his face so just take that and kind of draw a circle that stops at the top of his mustache and then you wanna go ahead and draw the sides of his hair or the side of his beard. So it kind of stick out over here on the side and go kind of behind the mustache or go under the mustache. And then um, you wanna draw some kind of wavy lines below. So the whole area that's right under his mustache is gonna be kind of where his beard is. So you don't really have to do too many details of the beard because we'll be painting that in, but you can draw a few curly lines in there. And then we'll go ahead and draw his hat. So the top part of his hat sort of kind of overlaps the top part of his head a little bit and then draw his eyes, um, sort of oval shaped eyes above the nose. And then you don't have to fill them in solid, but there's gonna be two little white dots in the center of his eye. And then some eyebrows above the eyes. And then for the mouth, you can draw like a little sort of happy face shape underneath the mustache. And then the fun part here is a hat. So we're just gonna take that and kind of draw a big wavy line that goes to the top of the canvas. I know this one's really hard to see because it's so light the way I'm drawing it, but it kind of dips down and um, you have the little fluffy thing at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and make all these lines darker so that you can see it. So we had the nose and we have his mustache. He looks a lot like a gnome here right now. I'm so used to painting a lot of gnomes lately that even my Santa Claus has some gnome characteristics here. And then make those eyes darker. I'm gonna make his hat kind of darker so you really can see it. And because this is a 10 by 20 design, it's really hard to film going vertical. So I'm gonna be having it going sideways like this a lot so you can get a better view of what it is. But I'll be turning it around on, and you'll be able to see some different angles. But I'm making this all nice and dark for you to see here. And of course you have the little sample that's shown on the screen there of what the drawing looks like. So you can definitely look at that. But we are going to go ahead and paint. So with the painting part of this, the first thing I did was I painted the background and I'm using the color turquoise blue and titanium white. You can customize your background. So if you wanna do a green background, you can do green and white. 
you can do pretty much any color that would stand out against that red. So I'm using a three quarter inch flat wash brush that I dipped in the water and I patted it dry. I loaded it into some of the turquoise and then I grabbed a little bit of white in there. So I'm basically just going to paint the entire background around Santa. So um, I call these contouring strokes because they kind of curve around. So this area that we're painting in is called the negative space. So it's the, the shape that's around the main shape, which is the Santa hat. But we're painting all that space around it. And so my strokes are gonna kind of curve and contour around this hat. And I'm just taking my brush, the tip of my brush, and I'm just kind of lining or outlining that area. And then for the rest of the, um, the area, I'm just gonna kind of have my strokes go in all different directions. Um, the white is blending with the blue, blue to give it sort of a two-tone look. So it's not one solid color, it kind of creates some interest in the background. And we can leave it blended or unblended as we want. So if we want it to some areas that are lighter, we would add more white to it. If we want some areas that are darker, we'll just add more of that turquoise. We're just gonna kinda let the colors blend and do their thing. And I guess these are like X strokes. So I'm kind of flip-flopping my brush and um, letting those colors blend together. And then um, with the flat brush, you wanna use the tip of your brush to really kind of outline the hat. You wanna um, paint it in as close as possible to the actual shape that, um, so we don't wanna paint over Santa's hat at all, but we wanna get as close as possible to Santa's hat so that we don't have to go back and paint it again. So I'm just applying this color all to the background, a nice even coat so the paint's not slapped on too thick. It's an even amount. If you feel like the paint is not flowing as well as you want it to, you can add a little bit of water to your brush and that'll it'll thin the paint down a little bit, but it would also help it to flow a little bit better. And then, so down here, it gets a little bit tricky because you have to kind of guess where his beard is going to be and where the curves are. Um, you can kind of guess where that, the mustache is, but the beard is still kind of um, abstract right now. So just kind of guess where the beard would stop and where the background would be. Um, but we can always paint over it. So if you take your blue a little bit too far down in this area, that's okay because we'll paint um, his beard over that color. Um, alternatively with this painting, you technically can paint the entire background all turquoise and then draw it, um, but you'd probably have to white it out, like white the hat so the hat will stand out against the blue and everything. But you can do that if you're using the traceable and you like to paint in layers. So if you wanna do the first color or paint the entire canvas, the turquoise and the white combination, wait for that to dry, do the traceable, and then um, you'll have to apply white to the area of his hat um, to get that red to be super bright. But um, so my, um, I'm going back in some areas and just adding some different, some white and turquoise in some areas, not necessarily a second coat everywhere, but just adding a few pops of different colors of the white and turquoise, kind of just blending it out, smoothing some of my strokes out there. It, um, I'm working on a stretched canvas, but I didn't paint the sides of it. I didn't demonstrate painting the sides, but if you are working on the stretch canvas, you can definitely take that turquoise and apply it to the sides of the canvas as well. I really like how that white blends with the turquoise, so I'm just adding pops of white in there, um, big expressive angular strokes in the background, and it's gonna look really pretty um, when we add the snowflake details, it's going to make um, make it look like the background has some more depth and color variation, and it's not just one solid turquoise color. But we are done with the background for now, and we are going to go ahead and move on to the next step. 
So I'm loading my palette with the color Cadmium Red Hue Medium. It is a really bright red color and it's going to make our hat super bright red and the bright red looks really good with this turquoise. So I'm gonna rinse my three quarter flat brush, get all that turquoise off of the brush and then um, kind of dry it and go ahead and paint the hat red. So this is still the same brush, the three quarter flat. And I'm just gonna take it and paint the hat solid color. So there's a lot of curves in this hat. So we wanna just make sure that we're using that flat brush to kind of curve and paint that shape in. It's okay if it ends up slightly overlapping any of the turquoise. Um, it'll make the red look kind of dark if it does overlap, but um, you don't want to leave any white spots at this point, so no canvas showing through. So go ahead and fill that all in. You really want to define the shape of that Santa hat, so use that flat brush kind of on its side to really um, get those edges and those curves in there. And like I said, it's okay if it overlaps that turquoise a little bit. Um, for me, this cad red is a very flowy color, so it's not really hard to get it to flow. But if yours isn't, you can add just a teeny bit of water to it and it'll kind of boost it. It'll thin it out a little bit, but get it to flow a little bit better. And using the full width of the brush to really fill in the solid area. And then when you get to the edge, you want to just make sure you're using that tip, the chisel of the brush on its side to define the edges of the Santa hat. When you are done with the hat, you wanna rinse your brush off and set it to the side. We are going to load our palette in our Santa's face colors. So um, the video is a little bit different from the directions, but um, I actually did not use the light portrait pink color in the directions, but for this video, I have the color Unbleached Titanium um, Light Portrait Pink, and I, I also have a little bit of Alizarin and Crimson on my palette. So the first thing I did was I mixed a little bit of the portrait pink with the Unbleached Titanium, and it, it kind of gets a sort of a rosy tone to the skin color. And so I mixed about equal amounts of those colors. Um, you can do more or less depending on what kind of um, tone you're going for. But, and I'm also using a number eight round brush. So I'm gonna take that color, I'm gonna paint his face. So I'm gonna end up painting over his eyes and um, you can paint over his nose too if you want. So paint over that entire area. So we're painting above the mustache sort of area and under his hat and kind of defining his head sort of shape. But um, some of that is gonna be painted over later because part of the beard will be overlapping on the sides. And then of course the hat, the Santa hat will be overlapping over the head a little bit. And then for the nose, I grabbed a little bit more of that portrait pink so it would stand out. So it's kind of a more of a pinkish color for his nose. And I'm just taking my brush and painting that in. If you don't have light portrait pink, you can just add a teeny bit of the Alizarin Crimson. That's that darker red color I also loaded on my palette. So you can mix a little of that dark of that Alizarin Crimson with the unbleached titanium and that'll get that get it to be kind of the rosy color. So for the cheeks, I actually used my finger to paint the cheeks of the Santa Claus. And this is Alizarin Crimson, 
and I just took my finger and dipped it in that color. You don't want to overload your finger with the color because then it'll be too strong. So it's just a teeny bit. In fact, if it feels like there's too much on your finger, just kind of um, wipe it off on the palette a little bit. But you want, you just want to take your finger to form the cheek. So you just kind of paint a circular shape. And of course, it's going to overlap part of the mustache, and that's okay. If you're doing this and the red got too red and strong, you could always load your finger in some of the unbleached titanium or the, um, the flesh color that you created on your palette and go back over it a little bit so it'll kind of tone it down so it's not so strong. And then I took my brush and I added a little bit of that alizarin crimson on the top of his nose. Just kind of outlined the top of his nose just gently. And then I took my finger and just kind of blended it back in to that color. So it wasn't so outline-ish, if that makes sense. So just kind of a little bit more rosy on the very top of his nose. So it stood out a little bit better. And then I'm just taking this unbleached titanium and I'm just adding a little bit on the cheeks just to kind of tone it down a little bit. So I did just a tiny little curve sort of at the top and then I took my finger and just kind of blended it in. Next, I'm going to load my palette with some Mars Black and I'll be doing the eyes. So for the eyes, I'll be using a number four round brush. And so this round brush is smaller and I can get in there and make my little tiny um, oval sort of shapes. So you can do the eyes. Um, at the end of this video for this painting, I ended up redoing my eyes because I thought that they were a little bit too high in this painting. Um, so you can do them a little bit lower or do them the same height that I'm doing. It's up to you. Next, I'm going to go ahead and paint his mustache and beard. So freshen up titanium white onto your palette. Use a number eight round brush. So this is um, this round brush is thick enough to where I can fill in some large areas with it but I recommend you definitely use a round brush for this step because you can really get in there with that round brush and really kind of curve your strokes and get the texture of his mustache but for now I'm just taking this white and kind of filling it in and I'm not just painting it in solid just to paint it in solid I'm just painting these strokes um, in the direction that I want the the hair to sort of go. So if my mustache, it's kind of curving in that direction, but the side of the hair is going to kind of curve down. So I'm going to make sure I'm stroking downwards in that area. And then the beard right here, I have a lot of curlies down here in the beard. So I'm just going to make sure that my stroke is kind of going um, spiral to sort of form the shape. Then you want to load just the tip of your brush in some black so a teeny tiny bit of black and I'm going to take that black I'm going to start at the bottom of the mustache and kind of outline the bottom area of the mustache with that teeny bit of black and since that white is not dry yet um, it's going to blend with that black to make it gray and I'm just taking it and using that light gray color that I now have on my brush and kind of creating some texture on his mustache. I'm just taking it and painting the strokes to kind of form the shape of his mustache and just kind of blending it. I'm not going to keep painting it because again, it's going to eventually turn a solid light gray color. So the more you over blend it, it's just going to blend too much. And then I'm going to get this white and kind of start filling in the top part of his hat. So his hat is overlapping part of his face and I'm just going to kind of get this white and fill that area in so that I have that filled in white. And then I'll go back and add some more texture in his beard as well. And then later on, there's a little bit more texture that happens on this part of his hat, but I'm just filling it in white right now. 
kind of forming that shape. Um, it's okay if I went outside my drawing line a little bit. I can kind of adjust it to my liking. And then for the top part here, I, I took that white and kind of went over a little bit of my red, but I wanted some more texture line up here. So I kind of made that top part a little bit wavy right there. And then I'm gonna go in here and start adding some more texture to my beard. Um, so just a teeny bit of black on your brush and I'm just gonna take my round brush and I'm just gonna paint some texture strokes in there um, with that really light gray. So a few spirals here and there with the really light gray. We'll go back over with a darker shade in there. But for now, I just really want to apply all that white in that bottom area to make sure all that canvas is covered in that area. And then um, you want to make sure that the mustache stands out from the rest of the beard. So a little bit of extra black right there on the bottom but it's not black it's more of a gray so more gray at the bottom there then you can add um, your darker sort of spiral lines so just a teeny bit more black on the brush and paint a few different kind of swirled lines on the beard and you can kind of just add some lighter swirl lines that kind of contour around those swirls so just have fun with it and um, the sides kind of kind of spiral out a little bit and they can overlap your turquoise background. Adding a few more strokes on that mustache. And a few strokes with that gray kind of on the sides of um, his beard over there on the sides of his face and the, then just keep adding some more texture lines in there until you feel like that your beard is finished like i said you don't want to overdo it because then it'll all just kind of mesh together but you can keep adding texture lines in there um, with that light gray and kind of get those um, kind of expressive strokes kind of on the side where it's sticking out a little bit and overlapping that turquoise a little bit but I think our beard is finished here I'm going to go ahead and add some texture to our hat so this texture is going different from the beard this one is going circular so I'm just taking that light gray on my this is still the number eight round brush but I'm taking that light gray and I'm painting circles, so little tiny, um, like you're scribbling. So if you had like a pen in your hand and you were scribbling um, spirals on a piece of paper, that's kind of what that is, just painting circular strokes with that gray and the white, um, painting in circles, and that'll create that texture on the bottom of his hat. So don't do too much black because then it'll turn too dark, which still needs to be kind of a white area, but just that little bit of gray um, is going to allow it to have some texture right there. And then you can do the same thing to the puffy ball on the tip of the hat, but I didn't do that step yet. But if you wanted to do that step now, you can. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take my number four round brush um, with the little tip of the brush, but I'm going to take it and do little two little dots in his eye. So give that little light in his eye. And then I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna do a highlight on the top of his nose and on the top of the cheek. So just with that number four, just the tip, little tiny line to create the highlight. And then I'm just kind of adding to the, the mustache here. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the fluffy sort of thing on the tip of his hat um, white. So take, you can use your eight round brush or your four round brush, it doesn't matter, but go ahead and paint that area solid white 
and I'm doing um, str scribble strokes again to start the texture that's going to be happening here. I'll essentially be doing the same texture thing I did to the bottom of his hat. So with that little pop of black in there, but right now I'm just filling it in solid white and then um, teeny tiny bit of the black on the tip of the four round brush and just taking that in there and doing little um, scribble strokes in there with that pop of gray or the pop of black that is going to create gray and that'll create that texture in that piece and then for um, another part of the hat here i'm just going to take my um, white and kind of loosely sort of outline some of the inner parts of the edges maybe give it a little bit of highlight just add some extra pop in that area color variation with the white so just a few little parts of the curves take the white and kind of outline that inner part with it then i'm going to rinse my brush and grab some alizarin crimson on my brush so that darker cool red I'm going to take that red and add some of that red to the hat so this is going to give um, some dark darker areas in the hat and so I'm just going to pick some of the curves and apply that darker red into some of the curves I'm going to add some more of the alizarin crimson to my palette again this is that number four round brush and I'm just taking it and just kind of painting some of the curved areas. And that's going to, um, especially kind of on the edges that don't have the little white lines. And it's just going to give it some shadowy areas in the hat. I can paint some larger areas with the alizarin crimson as well and even kind of take it sort of angle it back up into the hat give it some um, character some expression and you can see that darker red kind of what it did to that hat gave it some um, gave, made it more interesting to look at for his mouth so if you want his mouth to show you can actually just leave it without his mouth showing um, but you can use the, um, the alizarin crimson mixed with a little bit of the unbleached titanium and the number four round brush. And I'm just going to take it and just kind of paint um, the curved shape for his mouth um, in the directions for this. So my written and step directions, I actually um, painted the rest of the area black above the mouth. So it makes it look like his mouth is open. This next step, I'm going to show you how I did the snowflakes in the background. So this is the number four round brush in titanium white. And I'm just going to do different kinds of snowflakes. So when I do snowflakes, I do an X and then I do lines through the X. So it's one big sort of asterisk um, shape. And then I'm just going to do these little carrot shapes on the or carrot lines on the tips of all of those lines so these little angles that are kind of angling outwards on all the tips and then I can take that and add more little angles on the lines so with these snowflakes you can paint them all over the canvas you can have them all be different and this one's going to have the same setup but there's going to be these little t two dots on the tips of each of those lines and then i did sort of the angle sort of um, lines on four of the diagonals and then we can do a little snowflake so all my snowflakes kind of start out the same and then you, you just kind of zen out and get creative um, add different things to them i really like how it looks with the little tiny dots it kind of it really makes it look sparkly and magical and this one's going to be a larger one I'm going to get kind of fancy with this one and do some high class snowflake. Not really, so, but I'm just going to do the little kind of curve things 
on these lines And then I'll do some more lines and then maybe the carrot thing on the tip of those lines. And of course more dots. It looks really pretty when you do the two little dots on the tips of some of the snowflake lines. And then instead of snowflakes you can also do little spirals all over so you can do a combination of snowflakes and spirals you can do dots so you can make it actually look like snow in the background so just take your brush and paint dots everywhere you can um, do all of the above so this is a really fun step there's lots of creative things that you can do in the background of this painting so I'm just going to go silent here for a bit while I finish up the background. I'm just doing different various sized snowflakes and dots and spirals, filling it all up. Next I'm going to demonstrate the holly. So he's got a little holly leaf on the bottom of his Santa hat. This is Hooker's Green Hue Permanent and you can see it's such a dark green color and it's not showing up bright at all. So if that happens you can add a little pop of white to your brush and it instantly will brighten that um, green up. It'll brighten the green up, but it'll also make it opaque against that red because green is not an opaque color to begin with, but adding the white to it um, helps it to pop a little bit. And then over here, um, you can add a little bit more of the darker green in this area so it'll stand out against that turquoise. And I'm just kind of outlining it. So just paint the um, holly leaves. They're just kind of curved sort of spiky lines that form the shape of the leaf. And then the berries were painted with alizarin crimson color. And I didn't wait for it to dry, so it kind of meshed with the green a little bit. But so I did three circles. This is the um, number eight round brush, but probably be best to do it with that number four round brush so that it's a uh, a smaller area so do three circles and a pop of white is helpful for that red to get it to uh, be more opaque and kind of brighter to stand out against that green And when you're done painting the red, you can take the white and do a little curved line on either the left or the right side of the circles and that'll give it a little bit of a highlight. Next, I'm gonna go in and paint his eyebrows. So a little bit of white on the number four round brush. And so we would see some of his eyebrows kind of above his eyes. And you can even add a little pop of black in there to get it to go um, for texture. A little bit of gray in the eyebrows. This last thing I'm going to demonstrate is um, the glitter step. So I actually, after this painting was finished, I added glitter to the bottom part of his hat right here and also this part and a little bit in the snowflakes in the background, although the glitter didn't stick very well to any of the snowflakes uh, because it's a thick glitter. Um, but I used this Liquitex gel medium as an adhesive and this is the glitter. It's a, a kind of a chunky 
clear glitter and doesn't really work well for um, little fine areas but it worked really well for the hat so it really added some fun texture to the hat and it's super shimmery in person but it's so hard to capture glitter on camera it just doesn't do the shimmer thing but you can see it a little bit in that area um, unfortunately I didn't film it for this one but I did another version of this painting so this is also um, similar painting the only difference with this one is the mouth is open so you can see the difference if you painted the black area of the mouth um, it's open that's this was a second um, painting I did of Santa but I'm gonna demonstrate for you for this particular painting or this step right here how to do the glitter so this is this is just showing you how to do the glitter step. Um, I'm not trying to confuse you or anything. Why my painting changed? This is a different painting, a second painting of the Santa painting that I did. Um, I often do my paintings like two or three times um, because I film, and then I also do um, my blog posts where I do the steps and something. So a lot of times I'm doing the painting multiple times or it's so much fun I want to do it again but anyway um, so this is the gel medium and the number eight uh, round brush you can use any brush for this this just happens to be the round brush I grabbed so I'm just applying that gel medium to the area that I want the glitter I want my glitter in this area right here and then also on this gigantic fluffy ball right here and you gotta, the, it dries pretty fast, so you wanna add a really generous coat of it um, and kind of work fast and get your glitter on there super fast because it'll, it dries. And then get your glitter. This was actually just super cheap craft glitter I picked up at Michael's. Nothing fancy, I think it's just the Craftology brand, but it's really pretty in person. It's kind of, um, chunky but it's clear and I'm just applying it to the bottom part of his hat and the fluffy part right here and it sticks right to the medium um, it does a really good job as being an adhesive um, if you you could definitely just use like a clear glue for this as long as it dries clear it should work and I'm just gonna kind of tap off the excess that falls off um, and you can just kind of brush it off, but you can kind of see it adds a really pretty texture to the area of his hat and it, it, it's got to dry. But when it does dry, it's pretty solid. So we're back to the painting that I demonstrated the video on. I actually moved my eyes down a little bit. I painted over it and moved my eyes down a little bit because I thought they were too high. But here's my finished version of the painting I demonstrated in this video. And so, um, wish I can kind of show you the glitter so I did the glitter the same way in that one in the same areas and a little bit on the snowflake and I signed my name but that's it this is the conclusion of how to paint our whimsical Santa I hope you enjoyed painting with me too thanks for watching